Hello and welcome to Sotero training video. Today we're going to be looking at a virtual portal administrator, how to log in and what are the main options and configurations that we must take into account. So let's first of all start by accessing our virtual portal and accessing within a, a, a virtual portal administrator account, in this case Rick. So by default, even when accessing an administrator, uh, the administrator will also uh, have perhaps some, some content in his cloud drive. Uh, one thing that is easily identifiable as being an admin uh, account is the fact that um, in your cloud drive menu, you'll see your files, you'll see shared items, uh, you'll see shared with me, and you'll also more importantly see the user uh, items here so that's an easy way to identify that you are an admin user um, and also in shared items you see the items that have been shared by Rick but uh, being an administrator you also have the option to check shared items by other users and uh, also with that the option to uh, cancel the share or modify the share permissions so to access the administrative console, simply click on your user avatar and click administration. This will open up a new window with the administrative uh, console. And here you will find all the options and menus uh, necessary to uh, successfully administrate a Cetera virtual portal. And by default, the login uh, page is on the dashboard where you can see an, an overview of the virtual portal um, notifications, uh, the, the number of devices which are connected, the, the device type, uh, system status, uh, which will show you the amount of storage that has been allocated to the virtual portal, an amount of storage that's in use, a uh, user count, and also an overview of the licenses and uh, the consumption of those licenses. If we go to devices, here we'll you will see all the devices which are connected or have once connected uh, to the virtual portal and also the device user. Uh, from this menu, uh, it's important to note that we can check on, for example, the uh, backup status if there are uh, backup users or backup uh, devices uh, to the virtual portal. We can also check the version number of the firmware um, so we can easily identify perhaps if there are some devices which are not on the latest firmware. And more importantly, we can also uh, click and remotely configure a device. Uh, by clicking and remotely configuring a device, that will give us the option to check and configure the, uh, the device's uh, configuration, uh, should it be a virtual uh, or physical Cetera gateway or an end point agent uh, like for Mac OS, Linux or with Windows. Obviously the online status indicates uh, if the device is actually connected to the portal at this time uh, and we have one device which is connected, uh, the Mac OS agent that is being used by Liam. In reports, it's uh, just a quick overview of the uh, consumption of each user and all their uh, files and projects. And notifications, important for administrator, um, all the notifications, for example, if there has been any incidents uh, on the portal, if there's been any incidents uh, for users, uh, or any incidents on devices. Now, as this is a demo portal, um, there not, aren't that many, well, as you can see, there, there are not any notifications at all. Uh, incidents could be if a device has not connected within its uh, specified uh, time, uh, within a specified window, uh, if there has been any failures in backup, or if there's been any connectivity issues in, on uh, Cetera gateways, for example, these notifications will be found here. Uh, inside of folders, this will uh, contain all the backup folders, the cloud drive folders, and the folder groups of all your users. Um, so here you can very quickly identify, as with the reports also, 
uh, folders uh, that are being consumed by users and the size and the status. You can also create new folders here and share them with users. Within the user section, here we can uh, add, uh, add uh, local users, as I'm doing in this case, or we can also access uh, the uh, Active Directory user, um, uh, user groups and uh, end users. So if we go into groups here, we can also create our own local groups uh, to the portal. And again, as the Cetera portal is, uh, integrates with Active Directory, LDAP and, and some uh, identity providers, um, here we can also see that this portal is connected to a, uh, an Active uh, Directory domain called Cetera.corp. And here we can see the, the groups that are within that domain. Uh, within users, uh, some easy information, some relevant and, and useful information that we can see is, for example, the type of user they are. If they are an end user or an admin user, uh, we, we, are, we have connected with uh, the user Rick, so he is an admin. We can also see the plan, um, which is more like the, the, the profile or provisioning plan that we can assign users. Uh, you can see that some users have the default uh, provisioning plan, we have a plan called Contractor, and we have a plan also called VIP. And we can also check the resources used by each of those plans. So for example, if we go into the Contractor plan and just click here, we can see that the user has one gigabyte worth of storage, which has been consumed, and it has one Cloud Drive license. Uh, the VIP plan, for example, we can see that it also contains, uh, apart from an unlimited amount of storage, unlimited amount of storage is easily identifiable because there is no uh, limit, it just simply states the amount of capacity that is being consumed by the user. We can see that the user has an EV16, a virtual gateway license, a cloud drive license, and also a backup license. Now in provisioning, this is where we can actually set and create these uh, provisioning plans. Um, so you can see that uh, as before, we have these four different plans. Uh, we have the, the contractor plan, the default plan, uh, EFSS only, for example, the plan which I want to create that only uh, is managing the file sync and share and does not contain the uh, Cetera Protect uh, backup license. And then we have our VIP plan where everything is set to unlimited. We can very easily create a new plan. Just by clicking new, we set the services which we'd like to uh, contain within this plan. Uh, here we are setting the retention policy for this uh, specific uh, provisioning plan, retention policy for the files. As we remember that all files uh, contain versions. Uh, these versions are uh, stored and set according to the retention policy uh, and they're stored in snapshots. So here we can set uh, the retention plans hours, uh, days, weeks, months, uh, quarters and years. Okay? There is no limitation uh, to the amount of uh, snapshots and there's no limitations to the retention time as well. So theoretically, we can have daily snapshots for years. And also at the end here, we can also set the amount of days uh, for our recycle bin, uh, for our trash can, uh, to enable users to undelete files. Uh, and here it's set as default for 30 days. Again, uh, this number um, is configurable and there's no limitation to the amount of days that files can be uh, recovered. Here we're going to set a plan. So let's just call this a demo. And this is a demo plan. And here we set the uh, capacity, um, storage capacity for the plan and the amount of licenses. So if it's empty, it's uh, unlimited. And um, so let's just set this, for example, to 50 gigabytes. Um, there, are, there is no uh, server licenses. Uh, each user assigned this provisioning plan will have one backup license. Uh, no EV uh, licenses, so no virtual gateway licenses. And we click next and finish. And we can see now that we have the demo plan that has been, uh, has been created. We can set it as default if required. And what we can also do as a, uh, an extra plus, just to aid in, in setting plans and setting provisions, uh, provision plans for users, if we consider a, a landscape of hundreds or even thousands of users um, with differing 
provisioning plans and, and user profiles, uh, maybe we don't want to rely on just one plan, which is the default plan. Maybe we want to have several. In my case, uh, there are five. Here we can set up easy auto-assign uh, policies. So for example, let's say that if a user uh, belongs to a group, let's say um, I have a group in my AD uh, called VIP, and then we'll assign that uh, group, uh, so we'll assign that user the VIP plan. Um, and there's also here an option, if there's no match to any of the conditions, uh, we will set a default plan, okay? So this is a very easy way to set uh, automatic plan assignment for you know, a large amount of users. If we go into settings, so here's a control panel for more granular and administrative settings for the virtual portal. Uh, if we click on virtual portal, we can see that there is a number of uh, different types of settings uh, available to us. These settings are set on the global level by the global admin, but can also be um, refined or, or tweaked by the virtual portal admin. Um, so anything from passwords uh, policies to support emails um, to the uh, web address of the uh, mobile application, um, everything here can also be reconfigured uh, uh, on a virtual portal level. In notification settings, so here we uh, can set the notifications that we would like to receive as the virtual portal administrator. And so there are relevant notifications. Um, for example, if there is a user that is not backing up within a schedule, if a device which is a syncing data to the portal has not synced in three days, for example, um, or if there's an unstable connection, if we recognize that a device, be it a laptop, a Windows device, a Linux, or, or even an Edge uh, gateway, is being connect disconnected three times within X amount of hours, then we'll set, uh, send an alert to the virtual portal admin. Other relevant information which is uh, interesting to the virtual portal admin, uh, user storage quotas, if we find out that a user is consuming up to 90%, configurable of its uh, allowed capacity, then uh, an alert will be sent to the global admin. Here we can set the single sign-on. So if we have a SAML uh, identity provider, we can configure that. In Cloud Drive policies, this is an easy way to configure and restrict the type of files that users can upload to the portal, either deny or allow file types. In collaboration permissions, here we can set um, sharing permissions for all our users, be it local users or Active Directory users, users or groups, where you can allow or deny uh, users uh, to share files, to create public links, and um, even setting the permission on those links to read write, uh, preview only or read only. Uh, preview only is an interesting uh, permission for shares uh, and also for file, um, for file sharing where it only permits uh, those who access the shared link web access to the, to the file. It cannot, be, it cannot be downloaded, it cannot be uh, reshared. And also this preview um, link, this preview uh, view of the file is watermarked uh, with IP information, with information about who actually shared the file. So if uh, share, uh, somebody takes a photo or the, uh, there's a screenshot, there is still some uh, residual data of uh, who actually shared and where that file is coming from. And a col uh, collaboration policy, um, this allows and sets for um, users to, uh, for those who can, who can share and to what domain, uh, what um, email domain they can share to. So for example, if I have a corporate email uh, address, maybe I can allow all users um, without any type of restriction, but then I have another um, rule which I want to set, so if anybody shares with a Gmail account, I'll allow that share, but we must add the two-factor authentication uh, via SMS, and the max permission to that for that share is preview only. And whenever there's any conflict uh, between two rules, as you can see in this case, both are set for all users, the most restrictive rule will always win. Okay, so here I can set uh, allow and let user choose for any email address, but should that email address be a Gmail account, then the most restrictive policy will uh, be enforced. 
Here uh, we will connect to the Active Directory services. Uh, so here I've connected already to my Active Directory domain, um, my Cetera Corp. And also we can set user uh, permissions for read for the administrators, uh, for the read on the administrators or for the support user. Configuration templates are also an interesting feature of the virtual portal admin. Um, here I can see there are several already being created for this demo environment. Uh, virtual portal admins can create these templates to aid and assist with uh, deploying agents. Um, whenever, for example, there are several users or maybe hundreds or even thousands of users that need configured, we can set all the agent uh, defaults and backup schedules, for example, or cloud drive settings, uh, default sync folders, uh, throughput, even the firmware updates and update schedules. This can be remotely configured through a template, remotely configured, and more importantly, uh, automatically assigned. So if we take the same um, example as the provisioning plans, we can also automatically assign configuration templates. So imagine, let's say we have a specific uh, template for Mac users, um, then we can apply the uh, standard, uh, new standard user template. And uh, as we saw with the provisioning plans, if there is no match to my, the rules which I've, I've set, then we'll just uh, assign this user a default config. So this is a very easy way to automatically uh, configure our remote users. The first time the agent will connect to the portal, it will check if there's any relevant rules which uh, is assigned to that user, to that device, to that even uh, to the device name, um, and it will be automatically configured. So this is obviously removes uh, quite a lot of steps uh, in the um, deployment and configuration phase. Now moving on to logs and alerts, um, as we saw also with the global admin and Cetera, the Cetera platform has a very granular um, log and audit trail um, setting. Every single action, uh, be it an administrative or even a user, even on the file level, every single action or event is saved in one of the logs of the, the Cetera platform. Um, so, for example, I can check here um, outside of the system log, for example, the cloud sync log. This is uh, saving all the information that's coming from all my devices, which are syncing data to the Cetera portal. And I can see that, uh, for example, the user Rick had updated some files. Um, you can see all the files which have been, uh, which have been updated. Uh, the same applies if a file has been updated, if a file has been shared, if a file has been deleted, all that information will be synced up onto the portal. So as an administrator, you have access to all the, in, you have access to all the events um, of your, both your end devices and also on the, port, uh, on the portal itself. For example, I can see here an access log. I can see users have accessed the portal. I can see that Rick has logged in, Liam has logged in. We have an audit log of all the configurations and all the, the changes in configuration that um, users have been uh, applying to this, the, the virtual portal. So here I can see that Rick has been deleting devices, has been adding devices, uh, for example. All the logs that we see um, on the portal can be exported to Excel. And also the Cetera portal supports a syslog output. So all these logs can also be exported into a syslog server and then uh, parsed and, 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 and handled uh, through whichever uh, syslog uh, supported device or server that you may have. So as a virtual portal admin, we've covered the main topics. So just to summarize, the virtual portal admin has access to all the devices, has access to all the users, can set up local user accounts, can set up admin user, user accounts, can connect in active directories, can set the, the, the policies or provisioning plans for each of the users, 
and can also set up and configure rules for sharing for the types of files which can be uploaded and has complete visibility for the full landscape for users and devices on the virtual portal platform. Okay, so this is a quick overview of the Cetera virtual portal admin. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, should you need any more information, uh, please reach out to your uh, local Cetera representative. Thank you for watching.